Saudi Arabia, a country of 27 million people, home to one of the world's most brutal and repressive monarchies. The nation is comprised of two categories, the royal family, whose king, business entourage, and thousands of princes benefit mainly from oil funds, and everyone else. Virtually all inhabitants outside of the royal family are considered possessions of the kingdom and are treated as such. Western freedoms such as due process, equality before the law, and freedom of speech are completely rejected. Islam is the only recognized religion, and its associated Sharia law defines society. Sharia, which denies basic human rights to women, gays, and non-believers, carries extremely harsh penalties for religious infractions. Sharia has even been proposed as an alternate penal code in free-thinking Western nations. Dr. Rachel Ehrenfeld is a renowned expert on Saudi Arabia's connection to terrorist funding. She has been called in to consult for the United States Defense Department, the Treasury Department, and various intelligence agencies. Dr. Ehrenfeld has literally written the book on financing terror. Terrorism costs a lot of money to, uh, well, terrorist acts per se don't cost much, but to prepare the base from which such uh, uh, an action can be taken, uh, cost me billions of dollars. You have uh, to recruit people, you have to train them, you have to sustain them, you have to buy weapons, you have to corrupt officials, you have to do many things, and that costs money. And the Saudis have been doing it since the 70s. Her book, Funding Evil, is the definitive guide for following the terrorist money trail. One of the men she profiles in her book is Sheikh Khalid bin Mahfouz, a Saudi banker among the world's richest men with an estimated fortune of $3.2 billion. Dr. Ehrenfeld documents Mafuz's support of Islamic terrorist activities by exposing his bogus charitable and banking institutions. The, these organizations, uh, these char the Saudi charitable organizations, funded Al-Qaeda, fund Hamas, they give money towards their terrorist activities. The allegations in her book prompted Mahfouz to file suit against Dr. Ehrenfeld, accusing her of libel. He sued me because I wrote a book called Funding Evil, and in the book I documented how Saudi Arabia and Saudis are funding terrorism. Not only them, but that's part of the book. And he is just one name of many names in the book. But this case wasn't filed in American court where the book was initially published. It was filed in a British court where libel laws favor the accuser. The book was just published in October 2003 and was not even sold in England. He and his lawyers or somebody on his behalf bought 23 copies of the book in England and so, so that they can claim jurisdiction and said that I caused him damage. I libeled him because he's not funding terrorism. Of course, he denies it. He, he says that he never knowingly funded terrorism. I didn't write in the book that he knowingly did anything. Because English courts aren't bound by a written constitution that protects freedom of expression, their court system has proven to be fertile ground for foreign-born libel suits. In fact, the importing of these cases has even developed into its own industry, dubbed libel tourism. Many Saudi Arabians accused of providing support to terror activities have exploited the English legal system again and again. This process has recently been dubbed the Arab effect in the English press and has made London the world's capital for this type of lawsuit. Many journalistic publications have been forced to settle with Mahfouz on under threat of costly lawsuit. Mahfouz runs his own website where he posts apologies from these accusers and flaunts his victories. In the summer of 2007, Mahfouz sued Cambridge University Press for publishing the book, Alms for Jihad, where allegations are made about his collaboration with Osama bin Laden's funding machinery. Such is bin Mahfouz's legal muscle that Cambridge University, established in the year 1209, the world's oldest English-speaking publishing house, put up no fight, promised to turn all unsold copies into pulp, issue an apology, and even made payments to the Saudi billionaire. All of this occurred in Judge Edie's courtroom. By suing so many, he managed to silence the media from reporting about not only how he, Ben Mahfouz, funded terrorism, but how the others are funding terrorism too. Dr. Ehrenfeld chose to ignore the English court in an effort to avoid a costly legal battle. Ehrenfeld lost the case by default, was ordered to pay more than $225,000, and ordered to personally destroy all copies of her book in England. Even if she had attended, a fair trial was the last thing she would have been afforded. The forward for my, for my book was written by the former head of the uh, CIA, James Woolsey. And when the lawyers for Ben Mahfouz came to court, and presented the case, they said, well, here is the book, and the forward for the book was written by James Woolsey. 
So the judge said, oh, Woolsey, say no more. I award your judgment by default. And if you want an injunction too. And that was it. In reaction, Dr. Ehrenfeld has filed a countersuit in American federal court. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in June of 2007 that the case had merits to go forward and that every American author and publisher can appeal British libel judgments against them in U.S. courts. Prominent civil rights attorney and 30-year ACLU member Harvey Silverglate has identified this case as one of the most important First Amendment cases of the past 25 years. Silverglate adds the potential of many foreigners suing U.S. reporters and publishers for libel to do grave damage to free press is not yet readily recognized. Recognized. Organizations representing the victims of 9-11 are suing Mafuz as well and are awaiting the outcome of Ehrenfeld's suit to further bolster their cases against the Saudi billionaire. They are waiting to see how I do the case because if I win the case, they got him because he funded Al-Qaeda. Recently, Mafuz has become somewhat of a celebrity in the British tabloids. He purchased a big house in a very expensive area in Mayfair in London. Uh, which he was supposed to uh, uh, refurbish and he bought it in order to uh, stay there together with his 21 year old lover. Uh, being a Muslim, having uh, a male lover is not exactly uh, a good thing to do. Ordinarily, such actions would hardly merit any criticism, but if what Dr. Ehrenfeld says is true, then the sheer level of hypocrisy upon which Bin Mahfouz stakes his credibility and reputation is staggering. The average Saudi Arabian would be put to death for such, quote unquote, transgressions. In simple terms, why is Bin Mahfouz, a Saudi billionaire, suing Ehrenfeld, an Israeli-American, in English court over a book that wasn't published or even sold in England? We're not saying that he is a terrorist, although he very well might be. We're taking issue with his flagrant abuse of the laws of free society, particularly in the UK, home to the mother of all parliaments. When someone uses their extraordinary wealth to silence their critics, it begs the question, what are they so afraid of? This profoundly troubling case is merely one example of the astonishing corruption involving the men who rule Saudi Arabia. The question we should be asking ourselves is, why are we allowing such a regressive, barbaric, ill-willed regime and its lackeys to abuse Western freedoms and turn our own laws against us?